We're doing the brood moth. We're playing some magic. Mardu persistent moth mill kill. Can mill, can just kill, can blow lands up, can do all kinds of things. It kind of relates a little bit to the Croxa Kitty Skelementalist that we play, so we're pretty sweet and happy to play this. Last God is our creator. Last God put this together because Broodmoth plus Euro was pretty sweet recently, and Croxa plus Broodmoth was the obvious question of, well, why would you play Euro Broodmoth and have to interact and play Path to stop the combo to play Thoughts? It's just too complicated. Well, fine, we'll just do it this way today. So Croxa can be brought back by the Broodmoth. Flicker, 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 because it goes and dies when it's not escaped. Broodmoth brings it back. Solemnity stops it from getting the counter. It dies. Broodmoth brings it back. Solemnity stops. Repeat. Goes infinite, blowing our opponent up. Solemnity also works with a Putrid Goblin. Now, Putrid Goblin is just a 2-2 Persister. Nothing crazy, but was paired with an Altar of Dementia. Goes nuts. Milling. And get off some messengers in here for a sweet one as well. Solemnity preventing the undying trigger and <clears throat> sacrificing to altar or carrion feeders gets you going. Frexian and life here in the sideboard. Some ley lines. K command to bring stuff back. Fulminator mages for lands and lightning helixes to gain us some life if we need to. Last God's note is unblock carrion plus goblin solemnity is not kill but unblock feeder plus goblin moth is. Carrion, goblin, solemnity is not kill. Yes, because solemnity and carrion feeder, they don't get along. They don't get along. Anyway, let's go play some magic. Let's go ahead and pick the right list. And let's go. So let's see if we get to combo some people out. It is inherently a combo deck. However, it could just do its own merits of beating down our opponent with some rather large creatures. Match one, league here, let's play. And Last God's already, I, so Vesper Lark, we've got about 15 iterations, give or take, of that. Last God, I think this is on already a third iteration. Messenger beats downs, wins many games. I believe it. I believe it. Not to mention it's what, like a 3-2? Becomes a 4-3 or something like that? It's crazy. Crazy. Oh, look at this hand. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, I think we can I think we can keep this. Yeah, let's keep this. I have to go get like a blood crypt here, but I think we're okay, right? This looks good. Alright. Bloodstained Mire. I don't see any reason not to just slap down a, a carrion feeder here. Just to do something here on turn one. We got the Unearth, we've got the Croxa, we're, we're looking good. I mean, what's really funny is, oh, we want the combo, we want to do that. Broodmoth play Croxa, it's just a, a double down on, on discard. That's like, really good, you know. Wild Nakatl here, it's a 2-2. Two -two. I was off a Temple Garden. Looks like Zoo. Looks like Zoo. Let's fetch a Sacred Foundry? I feel like I don't want a Sacred Foundry. I need like a Godless Shrine here. Yeah, Godless Shrine makes more sense now. Uh, we'll just Crocs to them and, and... So, let's see here. Let's do this. Sacrifice, because we're losing it anyway. Swing for two, maybe block. Probably just hang out. Probably hanging out, right? Oh, the Blooming Defense, oh my gosh. Yeah, let's just hang out here. I've got the Unearth for the Crocs. Um, I guess my best top deck here is Solemnity. And then after Solemnity, it would be just another land. And when, when we combo kill pretty pretty close after that. 
it can't block that's 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 a brilliant observation but maybe my opponent doesn't realize that just like i am a genius and didn't didn't realize that either uh, attach it with landfall oh boy oh boy this is gonna get nifty oh my gosh i'm gonna die here oh my gosh <laughs> oh boy that's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Dang, that hurts. Dude, you could you could play a sick fling deck with what my opponent's doing. I'm at seven. I might die. Thud? It could be a thud deck, yeah. <clears throat> thud thud would win the game there thud would win the game okay so i have the swamp Am I just supposed to unearth Croxa here? Do the sack again and swing in? You think we need to cycle it instead? We could cycle it. I'm good with cycling. Alright, so we should be in for a little bit more damage than we've been in because, uh, not attacking the last turn. That being said, a fetch land here or whatever. Bolt to my face here. This is a 3-3. They need a land drop to kill me. Woo! Phyrexian Unlife's coming in. Mm -mm, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, let's see what kind of early game interaction I have. K-Commands might not be a bad idea either because they have artifact and little creatures. So Phyrexian Unlifes, Lightning Helixes... Probably a K Commander 2 here. All this looks kind of interesting to me. Hmm, okay. You think the no K Command? I could do that. I could do this combination of things. What do you think we take out then, Last God? You have a little more experience than I do. Are we taking like a piece of the combo, kind of like this? Down a brood moth, a feeder, and two unearths. Okay, it's kind of interesting. You're going down two unearths here because your interaction. You don't want to bring back a lot of these creatures. Why? Why not? Hmm. Why not go down like one altar here or one extra carrion? Let's do, uh, yeah, let's do that. Two carrion feeders, one unearth. I like that a bit better. Having the two unearths here with the season pyromancer, or messenger, or even the putrid goblin here, this blocks, right? Seems okay to do. And the unearths with crocs and solemnity and brood moth is a thing. I like cutting a brood moth because it's at the top end. I'm a little worried about Garrow's Messenger because it's so difficult to cast and damage to us is is important. We'll see, we'll see. Altar's a good sack outlet. All right, this this, this is this is good. I think I just go get Godless Shrine here. We don't even worry about carrying feeder right away. Let's take the least amount of damage. So Godless Shine, play a Cliffs, be able to Helix something. <clears throat> then lead up with Garrofs or, or Season Pyromancer here. This hand looks good. A little bit of interaction, uh, ways to dig. Yeah, I'm good. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right, Pelt Collector. Godless Shrine. I could see a Blood Moon really wrecking us. <laughs> All right. Helix now, Helix later. Probably a little downside to doing it right now. 
two mutagenic growth save it. That would be very passive. We always want shrine. Is that the answer? Always, always shrine. I guess I'm playing Garrof's Messenger next. Garrof's Messenger. Ooh. Okay, I hit this, so I can actually, this could get red. This can get red or white. This can get just a straight black. I have a swamp in the deck, I presume. So let's go get that. I like getting a Garrow's Messenger down here. Uh, the whole Undying, once it untaps, will be a nice blocker. Yeah, we're fetching a basic swamp. Basic. Play the Messenger, pass the turn. <laughs> All right, I like this. We're getting somewhere. Down to 13. Go ahead, opponent. We can fetch a basic mountain with this one if we wanted to. I don't think I want to play the carrion feeder necessarily. Ooh, a path. Ooh, a path. All right, well, I'll go get a mountain now. You like the feeder and sacrificing the Garrofs if we top deck a Solemnity there? That's fair. What are opponent's cards? Pelt Collector and a Voltic Brawler. Crazy cards, that's what they are. Alright, there's a Brood Moth. You like the Pyro leadoff? Playing a land out or no land? You almost have to do a no land here, right? No land here and see what we draw. This is interesting to do this because we're risking not being able to play Broodmoth here. But I guess we're trying to set ourselves up for something. Which we got kind of nothing. Let's put Carrying Feeder out here as well and pass the turn. Got it. We got this Unearth. We got a sweet Unearth here. Gonna go get a Godless Shrine with the Bloodstained Mire, so I have the double white. We're getting there. We're getting there. This makes energy, and you can pay energy into it, and it gains Trample. That's, that's all it does. It grows. You can do that, like, once a turn, I think. Looks like you can do it twice. Bolts, Seasoned Pyro. We'll uh, sack to Carrion Feeder. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 yum. All right, so Godless Shrine here seems good. Brood Moth, Unearth Season Pyromancer. If I top deck, nothing crazy. All right, they put the the pickaxe into play here. Let's go fetch him. Godless Shrine. There's our double white now. This is a strange game one haven't seen anything crazy with the landfall before but i like it i like it i like what my opponent's doing all right so we got a silent clearing here what i can do is i can put brood moth in and have two man open when i unearth season pyromancer do this brood moth silent clearing unearth we can sack we can sack to Carrion Feeder if we don't like the cards and go even further here. If we get a string of Unearths, we could do something with, with that as well. This is this is kind of nifty. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Can Fatal push something, look to play Altar, and then do some of the sacrificing with the Season Pyromancer next turn to draw more cards. I think I just attack with Carrion Feeder here and, and chill, right? I get it could grow a little bit more, but I kind of like both of these cars. 
My opponent had a Blooming Marsh. I guess I have to kill the Brawler here. Make them re-equip this. Yeah, they're running the Blossoming Defense, and we did see that. So getting rid of this, it grows the Pelt Collector just a touch here. Nothing stops us from going ahead and just, like, blocking Season Pyromancer and sacrificing. We lose Altar here, but we get a nice, sweet, uh... Ooh, they're gonna go after a Brood Moth here. All right, so Sacrifice Pyro triggers, makes a flyer, makes it bigger, makes Carrion Feeder bigger. We're gonna sack to this side too. I'd rather have a bigger, bigger um, Carrion Feeder than anything. I don't need that. I don't need this. I don't need this land, right? One, two, three, one, two, one, two, four. Yeah, I think I'm good. Let's sacrifice Broodmoth too. I don't need this land. Get out of here. Now we have a flying two, two and a four, four beefy zombie. My opponent's got two, three, threes. I got double block here too. Am I just supposed to double block? They're offering this. I like the double block. Goodbye. Set my season pyromancer up to reanimate it in a later date. I can inquisition their hand as well, and if I get a removal spell, things look real good. Another moth means a win. One, two, three, four, and one, two. Yep. This is true. This is true. Okay, so we don't quite get the moth here. One, two, three, four. Five brings two back. I could just double Inquisition here, make a blocker. I could double Inquisition and do the silent clearing here. Probably don't need the extra red. You can make the argument red for season pyromancer. So we miss on that. Let's take an Inquisition here, see what's up. I think we've got it from here. Take both of those. They're mine now. Thank you very much. Play this dude out. Four. Let's just do it this way. I don't need to do anything with the Persist Goblin. I want a blocker here just in case they get some crazy become immense or something like that, which I think at that point we die anyway. No, 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 it wouldn't give it trample. Next turn, we can pop Season Pyromancer's tokens into play, do some sacking. We could go for the win as well. All right, my opponent gives up there. That was cool. There were some interesting lines. It's going to take It's gonna take a, mo a, a hot moment to... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Hot moment to do some cool things. All right, so... Any changes? It's very complicated. I could believe that last god. I, I could. This one's got some 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 serious depth to it. I think we just run back here. I don't think I have really any changes for the most part. An extra of Unearthed Fulminator could be fun. Last God, did you ever get the Broodmoth, Solemnity, and Fulminator Mage going? You ever do that against, like, Tron and just machine gun all their lands down? <laughs> all right. How do I feel about this one? It has two Solemnities? We have a light. I like the lightning bolt here. The lightning bolt's telling me keep this hand because that one piece of interaction is probably really important. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this. Let's learn something here. I I, I wish it was a something different than the second solemnity, 
But I think this bolt could be really critical here. It's not it's not great, but it it's it's like just maybe just enough. So let's see, let's see how it plays. What about those K commands? <clears throat> we beat down now? Yeah, we gotta find a way to beat down. Um, do I play? I think I just tap land here. Tap land go. And try to take the least amount of damage because we're clearly not going to combo kill. Two mana. There's the Voltaic Brawler. Again, let's just keep our life total as, as high as possible here. Lightning Helix. Tap land go. Our unearths aren't terrible because they can be cycled at this point. So that's something that's going for us. There's a Bushwhacker. Nice little 2-1. Inquisition. Steal something away from our opponent. What do you got here? Path, Lightning Bolt, and this Pickaxe. I don't like the lightning bolt because it hits me. I think the bolt's more dangerous. This is likely to not do too many land drops. Let's take the lightning bolt here. I'm going to go ahead and fire off Croxa just to get one more card here. They might, they might ditch the pickaxe here, thinking, okay, I need to stop something with this um, path in the future. You think axe? I mean, axe, they don't value axe that high, as seen by them pitching it. And I actually don't hate a path. It's not doing any damage to me. It will stop our creature, but if we get Solemnity of Phyrexian life, then what are they going to do? So we're trying to keep our life total as high as possible to give us that opportunity for that lock. All right, apparently we're just gonna do solemnities all day long. <laughs> and I am gonna go ahead and fetch here. I know it, it cost us a, a point of life. But this way, if I top deck another land, and I'm not shocking in, I, I kinda like that, so. Forward we go, forward we go. Opponent's just attacking for two, passing the turn many, many a time. Do you have anything else? No, says opponent. Land, one, two, three, Solemnity, pass turn. We'll probably hold the third Solemnity, just in case my opponent has some sort of multi-kill enchantment. I don't think they will. And the pickaxe gets attached. We have some fetch lands, we do. Fetch land number one here, attacks for four. Fires this off. Hold solemnity for pyro, that's a good, good, good reason to at this point. Garrel's messenger, well, slap that down. That's at least a one-time blocker. It's not a multiple blocker, unfortunately, due to Graf Digger's Cage. A one-time blocker, though. Paths it. I think the path there is a bit silly. Let's get a red in case I get Season Pyromancer. I think the path there is a bit silly, because it's not a card they need to really be worried about. Attacks for two. Appears to be passing the turn. Where's our Phyrexian Unlife? Burning Tree Emissary. We have four damage here. Two turn clock. 
faster if they find a fetch. Go ahead, opponent. Mm -hmm. Dang. So we had Helix, Inquisition, Croxa, Solemnity, Solemnity, and a Lightning Bolt this game. We have 21 lands in the deck. We use one fetch land. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of our lands. They were lands in Solemnity. We even drew an extra Solemnity to our two. Bummer. If we would have found our Phyrexian on life, we'd be in tip top shape, but did not get there. Even an Inquisition stops a little bit of dam, or sorry, a Lightning Bolt stops a little bit of damage. It was a little ways away, a little ways. That cage kind of got us. Cage kind of got us, and after seeing the third game, I, I bring in the K commands. I bring in a, a, a K command or two easily. All right. We got one under our belt, though. Learning the list. Getting some cool interactions, though. Got to just avoid those graveyard blanks that kind of mess up a little bit of our interaction. Even so... I guess there we would have been able to get a Croxa back. Did we have enough in the gra I don't think we actually had enough in the graveyard, now that I think about it. We might not have gotten Croxa back. But yeah, the last god, I think we uh I think we hard flooded there. Right? We 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 use this. Get this sweet emote. No one uses the flood emote. They only use it when I uh, mention it. There, Grayus slapping it down. Grayus is building his next industrial probably. All right, let's play first here. Seems like an okay hand. Two lands, Altar, Croxa. Let's go. Do we play Altar first? Oh, I guess this is gonna decide it. <laughs> no, we're gonna play Croxa first because Crox is gonna disappear, or Altar's gonna disappear here. <laughs> Debating if you want to play some Belcher, go for it. What's up, Marauder Otter? Welcome to the Friday stream. The Friday stream. Yep, my oh, my opponent. All right, my opponent takes a season Pyromancer. Do I play Alter or Croxa first? I think Season Pyrons is overrated. I run four of and I'm never happy to see it. Ooh. And you're not playing the right the the right the right decks, Mad Knives. We'll go get this godless shrine here. Play Alter Pass turn. Alright. Mono black so far from our opponent. We can play some Croxa down and mill it. Uh oh. Assassin's trophy? Oh, it's just Tarmogoy. Who's ready to grow a Tarmogoyf? Dang, I could unearth Seasoned Pyromancer here. Seasoned Pyromancer is a lot of tickets. Can you sacrifice Crocs in response to the Enter the Battlefield effects? Yes. I think it's Unearth Pyro, but what are we putting? What are we putting in here? Unearth Pyro put two Croxes in the yard. To set up for the the ultimate in satisfaction wins. We can get a Croxa back next turn. That's always fun. <laughs> we can even mill ourselves a little bit to help with a Croxa. Look at that interaction. You didn't see that one, did you? Oh no, Inquisition. Well, now I don't have to mill myself. They <laughs> take my Solemnity. Shocker. Shocker. This is a 4-5. This would make it a 5-6. I think I just chump block here. Just like chump block and just hang out because I'm going to be reanimating uh, basically Croxa here. 
Let me find another solemnity. Black, black, red, red. Croxa. One, two, three, four, five. Boop. This also shrinks the Tarmogoyf, which is kind of cool. Depending on what they discard, plus they can get a land. <clears throat> Planeswalker Inquisition. Attack for two, pass turn. Jolly, thank you for the follow. Rude? Who's rude? They rude? Me rude? We're all rude. We're all rude. If they go to kill this Croxa somehow, I'll just mill myself, sacrificing the Croxa, and get all my uh, Croxa abilities back. Oh, they shocked that in. I did say I would sacrifice the altar with the Croxa to get my Croxa back next turn. Am I doing that? I mean, if I just let this hit the bin, then what? I mean, like, I'm, I'm altering, but I'm probably not going after them. I'm going to do this. I want to see how this works. So I mill myself here. Could get some interesting things. This way, I'm good to go. I mill over Inquisition. Kozlik and three lands. Actually, I'm really happy with that mill. Um... It's, it doesn't get much better. <laughs> that's that's like, yes, it grew Tarmogoyf to big bad 6-7 Tarmogoyf. But like, I'm cool with that. Let's get them now. Haha, -ha, gotcha. Get got. Oh, Tarmogoyf. I'm glad to see that hit the bin. Now they have a creature. Maybe a little bit of a shame that I put a creature in the yard because the bolt's going to be hard to kill the Tarmogoyf here. Plays a forest. Follows this up with a Luris. Land? Nice. Black, black. Black, black, red, red. Oh, it's frozen. It's frozen. Fetching. It was too much. They know about the bolt. I bolt the Luris, then I get this Croxa back. That worked. That worked. Okay. All right. Um... The Thoughtseize deck makes me kind of want to lay Line of Sanctity. I don't like the Unlife package. I don't mind the concept of maybe a Fulminator Mage. <laughs> oh. Oh. Apparently Twitch is like, welcome to the chat room. What do we think? You think Sanctity out? Oh, you think Sanctity in. That's what I'm thinking. Probably just Sanctity. Like, maybe Helix, but it's probably just the Sanctities in. Um, I think I pull one carry in here, one Putrid. You think Feeder, Feeder, Solemnity? I was thinking Putrid, Feeder, Solemnity, maybe. I think that's fine. I think it's, when you're pulling this few cards in, I think, I don't think it really, really matters. Even the Lightning Bolt could probably be shaved one. Sometimes their creatures are just too big, and since one of our plans is a bit of a mill strategy, you could, you could kind of watch that. All right, so we have an Inquisition, an Unearth, and a Carrion Feeder here. 
This is kind of a weird non bowy kind of hand here. That's true, we did see the Luris. That's true. And the bolt's good against Luris. I don't particularly like this hand. It doesn't really do anything. I think this one we can ship back. Not to mention that it's a little awkward having the planes. Planes is kind of the last thing we want to see here. I think I'm going to mulligan. Oh, look. This is a heck of a lot better. We can keep this. <laughs> um, okay, so last god. Your... In this, in this scenario here, we have the Solemnity to go towards with Altar, or we could have Carrion Feeder or Bolt. You think just put back the Feeder here and try to find something with these two combo pieces? I'm kind of good with that. Have a removal spell here. Have a few lands. Altar lets the Goblin be a win. That's true, because the the reanimation there, the reanimation brings it back, right? With the Solemnity. I don't know, it'll be interesting because my opponent could have like an Abrupt Decay or an Assassin's Trophy that could break up our combo. But I guess it's breaking up any, any element of the combo. Verdant Catacombs and Mistress Bobble used for our opponent Blood Crypt into play. Tapped. We have a Ley Line of Sanctity into play. Bobble trigger and draws a card. Junge is weird because they have enchantment interaction. That's true, they, they, they do. And that kind of messes up a little bit of our Solemnity components for sure. Scavenging News. All right, looks like I'm gonna just fetch here. Probably wanna just bolt scavenging news before it gets too large. I could also take this turn to put an altar in, but that's not gonna do a whole lot with the scavenging news. Let's uh, let's just uh, pass back and plan to bolt. You wanna bolt immediately? I think we can wait. Jun doesn't normally have any any pump spells. Renin six. So now I can bolt the scavenging news. Probably okay to go ahead and do that now. We're doing that because we have Garrow's Messenger here. We want to be able to utilize Garrow's Messenger. I'm gonna go get this Godless Shrine. You're right, the Godless Shrine is much needed. Uh, oh, that's true. We do have the combo with Solemnity and Geralt's Messenger and Altar. This is true. So if we're going to go for the combo here, I'm guessing it's smarter to play Solemnity first. And then try to do, almost if I draw land, almost just wait and then Geralt's Messenger and Altar all together. But it's probably Solemnity. It's a weird decision. It is. We gotta we gotta piece it together, but I think Solemnity is where you wanna be first. I can kill this, but they may not look to kill this immediately. And having the Garrel's Messenger without Solemnity out makes it really subject to being just picked off a couple times, especially with like extra Renin Sixes, Liliana's, Bolts, other things Jun typically runs. The question is probably, I need to somehow get, oh shoot, it's Ashiok. Well, that's fine. I need to somehow get the altar down and the Geralt's Messenger. Yeah, Ashiok means nothing, but. I think, Play the messenger. There's no way for them to do Ashiok and the messenger. But if my opponent has a scavenging news, things get a little weird.
I think this is fine though. Messenger here, pass turn. It should be fairly safe. Yeah, it's like two, maybe a third ooze. And with the Ashiok in hand now, not saying that they had that initially, they probably drew it at some point. But this this just set up here, I think we just combo kill next turn. This doesn't lose to K command. Depending on how much mana they leave up, they could interact with us in a weird way to get rid of Alter or Solemnity. We're almost hoping that they play like a Bloodbraid Elf here. It's true, it doesn't lose to a pillage. This is very, very true. I want them to spend as much mana as possible here. <laughs> spend it all. Spend it all, Jundi. We know there's probably a dead Inquisition or Thoughtseize in that opponent's hand. Maybe two at this point. And so having two dead cards here means that we're probably looking at beating four cards. We need them to not have Abrupt Decay or Assassin's Trophy, really. At this point, though, I think they would have popped the Ley Line and then double or single Thought Seized me. It's a message from Loki. Loki's watching the stream. Hello, Loki. Loki is Last God's new cat. There we go. Blood Braid, I'll spin the wheel. Miss... Oh, last god, you're a genius. Look at that K command. Look at that K command. They make me discard, return the scoos. They discard themselves. They discard an Inquisition. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. They don't want to take damage. We should be good here, right? We should be good. Alter is a combo kill. I think this is... I'm not seeing anything they can do here that changes this. Mill combo kill. If they let me kind of go for it, I'll get to, to see everything they're doing. I can even... I can even Inquisition them. Let's do that first. Just more information. We should be pretty okay here. What do we have? Scavenging news, Inquisition, a lightning bolt... Yeah, I'll take your scoos just in case things go awry here. Alter. <laughs> Get comboed. Noting they didn't, uh, they don't have lures. You know, so afraid of crocs with ash, yeah. I want to give us the GG's. I'm trying to give it back. It's uh, lagging here. <laughs> we get the match there. Woo! Woo! A little 2-0 against Jund. I always like taking down Jund. Jund is a difficult matchup uh, because it can and has over the years just gotten ways to interact with all kinds of components. Um, enchantments like you're saying. It can do artifacts. It can do creatures pretty well. So beating Jund gives some very nice validity to a, a, a list. Makes you feel good about it. All right, match three. Ooh, ooh, playing the Mill Moth. Mill Moth, in modern. We got some Mill combo there. Although I say Mill combo, uh, Geralt's Messenger would have kill comboed first. Look at this hand. <laughs> Look at this hand. Lurs for my opponent. So, when I very first got back into magic, and I've been in and out of magic a little bit before I could actually, like, super afford magic. When I got back in, my, my, my friend introduced me, and I, I, I played some just janky thing, and he was like, Pod. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty cool card. And then he's like Geralt's Messenger out of um, uh, Stranglerout Geist after the bird, you know, podding up and stuff. He's like, oh, that's cool. And he eventually got to like Vorapede, and I was like, what's this doing here? And that was my reintroduction to uh, magic. 
check pet picks. We'll take a look. If I look, you're gonna have uh, Loki on on uh, YouTube probably. There you go. It's Loki. Loki's hanging out. There's me. Inception. There we are. I'm just gonna leave that up. I'm not even gonna minimize it. All right. Opponent fetches Arid Mesa here. Burn Luris? Maybe Burn Luris. We'll see. Luckily, I've got this Inquisition. <laughs> Burn Luris. Leyline seems good. Phyrexian and Solemnities seem good as well. Two in for my opponent. Messenger's really good here. I believe it. I believe it. Let's Inquisition steal something. Oh my gosh. My opponent's just just on the mono mono land. We got Spike, Bolt, Bolt, Rift, Bolt, Skewer. Um. I guess I'd take the Lightning Bolt. Because the Skewer's kind of hard. To recast? Maybe? I mean, they just attack me or they suspend a Rift Bolt and then they obscure the next turn, but. You know. So I think I play this Putrid Goblin down. There goes the Rift Bolt. Looks like they're going to attack for two. They'll see the top card. The top card's an Altar. I think to save my life total here, I'm supposed to play Putrid Goblin, right? And allow them to shoot either Bolt or this Rift Bolt at, wherever the Rift Bolt is, there it is. I think it's those, I can shock in the Blood Crypts. We don't really need the Inspiring Vantage to come into play untapped and this altar's not being played for a, a few turns. And if they shoot this, it persists back and at least is a chump blocker here. So that saved us three damage. Top card's Inspiring Vantage. I just block here, save another two points, which I'm going to get from my Blood Crypt here. Opponent suspends a new Rift Bolt, which is a brand new card. Let's go ahead and shock in. Shock, Garrel's Messenger, pass the turn. All right, a couple, couple of white Mana Pipped cards here. We got Garrel's Messenger back to back. My opponent doesn't want to really kill Garrel's Messenger and waste bolts hitting it, but as soon as it becomes untapped, it becomes a problem for our friend over here. So a few decisions have to be made here. If it came in untapped, it'd be kind of crazy. It'd be kind of crazy. I think if it came in untapped, it would have to be like closer to a Persist than an Undying trigger. The anti finks Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, I think it would I think it would have to be a persist. So we've rift bolted, we decide to skewer, we hit me for two. There's a new Garrel's Messenger. I mean if they draw a land we're in in, in trouble here. I have to stay back on defense, I think. If I attack here, let's assume they just have the one land again. I attack here, I put them to 10. If they don't attack, they'll have a blocker. If I hit a land like a basic, I can alter and Garrels. I like a swing. I like a swing. I'm dead. I'm dead anyway if they get a land here. So swing, threaten. Goblin Guide's coming in. Oh, they don't. Oh, they don't. Yes. Just alter is win. Is it? I swing here. Yeah, we swing in. They block. We get a little bit of undying here. Undying comes back. Does the damage. 
I don't I don't see I don't see how this is is a kill. Maybe I'm missing something. Oh, because I have the unearth. Because I have the unearth. Big brain plays. Oh my gosh. We got the unearth. Oh my gosh. We're taking them down. Haha! -ha! They're like psh, fluffy. That's silly. Unearth. Gotcha. We got there. We figured it out. Took a little bit of big brain plays there. The biggest of brains. My opponent did uh, <clears throat> sort of miss on a land for forever. They said nice. <laughs> we put a smiley face. Smiley face. We've gotten some good, good vibes from our opponents. Got some, got some good vibes. All right, this is an easy Leyline in and Helix in matchup, and I think it's just some Phyrexian on lives. Right? We just, we just do this. Like you could even maybe make an argument for K command. Because we're doing this, I think it's like Brood Moth out and like feeders and like a Singleton Altar or something. Like this seems fine. We don't need really the brood moth to win this. We have we have lots of stuff that really slows the game down. We can play just a casual Croxa, uh, even just casual carry Gerald's messengers will be fine. Removals, repeat this. Yeah, this seems good. You think the singleton Inquisition out over an altar? All right, all right, I'm okay with that. You could even take like one altar out here and put a brood moth in if you think, okay, well, we're just going to play this casual ba game back and forth. I'm going to get Solemnity on life at some point. And I'm going to need to just swing over and kill my opponent. You could maybe do something like that as well. All right. Is this kill fast enough? Turn four. I mean, it's a combo. Turn four. Altar on two. Solemnity on three. Geralt's Messenger on four. I want to try it. I mean, it's a turn four kill here. And if my opponent, when it stumbles just once here, we'll be in good shape. We have a Swiss Spear. It's a little bit of a dangerous card here. Turn four on the draw. Yep. Go ahead and fetch here. We're gonna go get that godless shrine. We actually don't have to take any more real, real difficult damage. Is there a second swamp in this list? Goblin guide. All right, this is this is some damage. This is some damage. Shocks in. Blood crypt. Thought seize. That kind of just ruins everything. Where did the black come from? Oh, we had black before, but anyway. Takes my altar. Things got real awkward now. Leyline of Sanctity. Um, I guess now we're looking for like an unlife more. Maybe more of an unlife. Maybe they won't kill me here. Maybe they won't kill me. Man, Leyline looks even even stronger with thought seizes. Oh. 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 There's a basic planes. And <laughs> Broodmoth. Broodmoth's like, sup! What's up? I'm here. What'd I miss? I missed us dying. Seven damage, eight. All right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to play the Solemnity down. If I get a Phyrexian on life off the top, we have a shot here. I'm assuming my opponent has like nothing. Yeah, any burn makes it lethal. We basically need them to have just nothing. 
stone cold nothing. Team Rebel Rage is guaranteed lethal. Yes, this is true. Goblin Guide, 910. Bump. All right. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Couple triggers there, get a couple lands. You think it'd be better as a prowess list than a burn list? Probably. All right, so we're gonna look a little bit harder for these Ley Line of Sanctities. We went for the combo. Combo didn't work. I sort of like being on the play and having the Inquisition in over the altar. So I'm gonna make that switch there. To me, the altar is a bit more fragile and I don't, it, it, it's an extra piece to combo with. I mean, you can definitely get it there, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't wanna try it. I wanna, I want something that interacts with my opponent. It's a small change. If we don't draw an Inquisition, we'll just assume it's an altar that I swapped out and then we'll see how bad we miss it. But let's look for that ley line here. Gotta get that ley line. That'll, that'll shut the door. I don't know. One lander, well, this isn't really even a keepable hand. One lander, random unearth here. Easy mulligan. Ooh. Ooh, this is, this is a card that makes you think, makes you think. Hand is a little light in terms of colors. My opponent could thought seize me again. Yeah, I worry because of thought seize, but your thinking's not a good thing. You know what? We're, we're We're keeping, I'm gonna get rid of the Sunbake Canyon. Godless Shrine tap, go opponent. Don't thought seize me. You hate going to five? It's always tough to go to five. I mean, you're looking at seven cards. Look at this, just a mountain. No fear, lava spikes me. Psh, psh, oh, nice, nice one, nice one. <laughs> kind of just want to get the mountain. Kind of want to get the mountain. Kind of want to go on the shrine. Kind of want a blood crypt. Kind of want it all. Do, 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 do. I'm going to shock it in here. And we're going to cycle this on Earth. <clears throat> crypt tapped. Here we go, Thought Seize inbound. Blood Crypt. Oh, it was just a bump in the night. It was a little, a little sound, a little sound in the background. A little sound back in the background. On life, go, 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 go. Maybe I get to shock in here and get the ley line of sanctity down as well. Stop all this crazy burn. Double burn spells here. Ooh, Swiss beer. Ooh, ooh. Bump in the night. I'm at five. Top that solemnity, easy peasy. Nope. Nope. All right, we're gonna shock in here. They do kind of have to attack me to get me to zero. You want to fetch a basic there? Hmm. I guess that could have worked as well. I can't use Bloodstay Mire now. I guess that's the reason. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. New cards in Zendikar. Why can't red have targeted removal? Why? Why, why, why? Oh, why? Being at two there meant nothing. Meant nothing. They were killing it either way. 
that was rough. And I'm also extremely upset that Black has re enchanted removal. Just putting that out there. Just putting that out there that red and black were not really supposed to have enchantment removal. That is their weakness, and they have it. And and speaking as someone that's been playing red black decks for a very long time, I'm okay with that. I respect that weakness. Okay, so do I keep this? This looks kind of fun. Putrid Solemnity and just get an altar and be like, win, 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 win. Win, 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 win. Keep for fun? I like that. I like that. Keep for fun. We're going to have fun today. Yeah, We're going to even shock in and pass turn. I am Grix's Death Shadow. Mole for good? Psh, no, 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 no. Shock in. Awkward. Now we now we play with my opponent's mind. Ha ha ha! I'm Mardu Colors. Carrion Feeder. Carrion Feeder is going to be the bait here. I want to kind of get probably a Solemnity down without too much worry here, and a Putrid Goblin right after. We'll see. My opponent's not shown us really anything, so putting out kind of a bait card here to me makes the most sense. We have Scalding Tarn and a Snow-Covered Island to be noted. In for damage. One to be specific. Alright, my opponent's really not doing anything here. We're just going to pass the turn. I really need them to do something here. I'm going to leave Fatal Push and Lightning Bolt up in case there's some weird version of Storm. Storm doesn't typically play these kinds of cards. But we don't have a much of a read on my lovely opponent over there. Blood, a Singleton Blood Artist would be kind of cool. I'm just going to pass the turn casually. Nothing crazy happening here. I think we're just going to be looking at Blue Moon at this point. Oh, nope. See? There we go. Green. Green usually means some fun cards. Here we go. Breeding Pool, Stomping Ground. All right. Bolt's looking a little bit more delicious here. I think we'll see a Euro. Oh. What? What are you doing, opponent? Hmm. That's fine. I just... Bolt? Run and six? I know Bolt could go upstairs, but Run and six is a bit of an annoying... Annoying one. All right. Solemnity and Fatal Push pitch to Season Pyromancer. You like Solemnity down? What about just playing the Season Pyromancer here? My opponent's playing some deck that has Cryptic. I don't think Solemnity is very strong. They look more controlling, so... And you still have a dream? <laughs> I'm gonna go against your dream here. We're gonna see whose idea would have been better. Season Pyromancer. We're gonna get rid of Solemnity and Fatal Push here. I have more Solemnities to pick up at some point in the deck. Spiring Vantage and Pass Turn. If I want to play well, there's a mixture of playing well and, and playing not well that Last God is... You know what Loki wanted? Loki wanted it this way. Bonus Ren and Six here. Shoots an Elemental. Okay. What do we have? A Snapcaster? That's fine. I'll just unearth my Season Pyromancer. Thought Scours themselves. <laughs> Hitting Thought Scour, Thought Scour. Oh. Okay. It does look like Teamer Wreck a little bit more now. attack. Let's kill Ren and Six here. Let's send an elemental in. Let's cantrip. 
a unearth because there's really not much in my yard here. And let's play down a putrid goblin, Pastor. Here's a question for you, Last God. Did you flood out like this a lot? I seem to be getting quite a few lands. Now, I know I pitched a Fatal Push and Solemnity, but I, you know, I expected at least a spell, not, not what I got, which was lands. You did not? Okay, so it's just me. It's just my luck. It's my luck. I love it. All right, what do we got at four mana? Wilderness Wreck. Yeah, I think so, last guy. Shoots Putrid Goblin. It comes back persisting. I, I respect my opponent sees a card that's not normally played and goes after it. What Zale said? You can do that too, Casey. You're the conductor. You need to lead the flood charge. Dang. You lost your conducting? <laughs> Alter? It's mine. It was stolen. We had a crazy Zale. We had like five, six, seven subs yesterday. It was nuts. People were all on the jams. They were like, here, Fluffy, have a sub. We're at like, what, 65? We're the closest that we've ever been to possibly, um, you know, possibly getting to that hundred. That would be crazy to hit a hundred by the end of the year. Could we do it? No? Charles doesn't believe. Charles is a jerk sometimes. I can't believe I let him stay there. I'm targeting myself trying to hit a croc, so. I hit another putrid goblin, which I, I kind of don't want anyway either. So I'm gonna bring back the tokens here. This way I can at least probably hit the Renin Six. My opponent has two cards in hand. See if we can't get these in there. Can I can I draw a non-land? Is that physically possible deck? What's that? No, no. Okay. Alright. I get it. I get it. We're, we're supposed to have more lands than our Wilderness Reclamation deck. I gotcha. I gotcha. Understood. Your row. <laughs> Your beats. Never miss a land drop. Turn eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're right on schedule. Flawless victories. Steam Vents comes into play tapped. Two cards for my opponent. Plays an Archmage Charm to draw some cards. Sounds, sounds good. If I'm not flooding, I'm not trying. There you go. This Field of the Dead is going to come back here and, and bite us soon. With a whole bunch of better tokens than my tokens. That's right. My opponent's questioning everything. I fetched before they did. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have, I have over 50% of my lands already out of the list. 39 cards to go. Snow Cover Mountain for my opponent. They untap. Float mana? No, nope. yep, maybe. No, nope. six lands. Ooh. Okay. 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 <laughs> Cycle's a lonely sandbar. You got it. You got it. Just draw a Solemnity into Messenger and pretend they have no counterspell. Just slamming Messenger down right now. We gotta slam him down right now. Opponent's got that counterspell. Well, I can pay for this. 
Am I gonna regret not playing this land? Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm attacking. Do I sacrifice this to make it a 4-3 and drain them for another 2? Do I do that? Only if they go for it? They're bringing Euro back? Why would you say that? Maybe they forgot about it. It's not in the yard. It's, it's doesn't exist. It's not there. Stop, opponent. Stop. Don't don't touch this green card. Look at this. You're blue red, opponent. So I guess I'm supposed to go ahead and sacrifice this, but then if I get the solemnity off the top, I'm supposed to not sacrifice there. So I guess we just sit here and wonder if we're gonna top deck a solemnity. I'm not gonna top deck a solemnity. Solemnity or moth. My opponent's floating one land, one mana. You believe in me? Believe, 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 believe. Now, if you played the BAM version, you had a cantrip for this exact reason. This isn't good. My opponent's going to take another turn. Nexus of Fate. Okay. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's go. Oh, oh. Don't ruin me, opponent. Oh, this is like bad, but okay. Having more euros in play doesn't matter at this point. We could combo kill them other ways. So them gaming life is frustrating, but not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Let's do it. Mm, 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 mm. Field, Mystic Sanctuary. Mystic Sanctuary picks up a charm. All right, so now they have a counter spell. How do we beat the counter spell? Ghost quarter. Now we're making making zombies. Now we're making them. So rude. It's so rude. They're beating me up. So the Archmage Charm unknown card. That one Archmage Charm in hand. I'm a nine. Are they gonna just draw with it? Wait, what is this? They picked up the Archmage Charm. Oh, I should have milled with the altar? That's true, it's true, I should have. You are, you are very, Second path, you are very correct. Mill with an elemental or something? Hmm. That's the that's the genius plays that we needed. We uh missed a a line there. Very finessed line. What else are we doing? You know what? I'm so angry, I'm going to mill you one. Ha! Get milled. Watch. So I'm going to mill the most beautiful card right here. Manly. Look at how beautiful that card was that I milled. Beautiful card. Beautiful. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm milling out a spite. Look at that dryad. Get him. Get him. Mill him to death. Ooh, that was a good one to get rid of. Oh, I'm glad I did it. All the way there. Okay. Nobody ever claimed we were good at magic. <laughs> Turn 10. I've got all the lands. All the lands, ladies and gentlemen. All of them. 10 lands to be exact, plus one in the hand. Thought scours for our opponent.
Teleria West mm. goes and gets a Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle. <laughs> Hits me for three. They can just ghost quarter themselves and keep hitting me and Euro and, and hits me and everything's so painful. Let's go to the next game. This one was painful. Sideboard we go. There's Croxa. Lands. There's a Solemnity. Okay. Mm, I kind of want to bring in a Fulminator Mage for this one. Fulminator Mage taking care of some creatures wouldn't be bad. Leyline of the Void is also not too bad here. When the misplay was pitching the Solemnity. Perhaps. Perhaps. So I don't like Lightning Bolt in this matchup. It doesn't really kill much. They shouldn't be able to interact with my graveyard too much. In some ways, I don't necessarily like the idea of super milling them. But then at the same time, that's one of our combo kills. Hmm. Fatal Push doesn't hit too, too many things as well. I think it's going to be two Voids, two Fulminators. Where's the Smiting Helix? We're not that type of list. <laughs> the Brood Moth. Well, we've we've had we've had a combo kill other ways, so we we've done that, right? I'm not forgetting, am I? I'm not forgetting, am I? Uh. I don't think I'm forgetting. Versus Jun, exactly. Big brain Jun plays. All right, we have a void. We have a one lander. This is this is what happens. Last God, we go from flood to one lander. One lander to flood. I can play two carrion feeders here and have a leyland the void. Stops a bit of the nuances wonder if that's fast enough carrying feeder gets picked off by a renin six could be picked off by a bolt as well Yeah, any lands. You know what's going to happen if we keep this one lander? You know exactly what will happen. We won't play magic. So we're not supposed to keep this. Which is sad. But I don't, <laughs> I don't think we can keep. Let's be grown-ups and mall. All right. Okay. This actually isn't too bad. Just ditch the mountain here. I, I guess I'm just ditching the mountain because it's the least helpful card here. And I can go get a blood crib with the blood stain mire. Draw altar win game. There you go. There you go. That's all we got to do. All right, Blood Crypt down. Go ahead. We have Putrid Goblin and Solemnity in hand. This combos with Altar. Variants. The Variants. All right, no Altars yet. I'm going to put Godless Shrine into play tapped and pass turn, see if we can get a Solemnity down. I don't want to put the... Future Goblin down without the Solemnity down, if I if I can. Breeding Pool tapped. V Steam Vents untapped. Two mana spent here. Plays a Renin 6 for just some solid basic value. Goes up with Renin 6. All right. Top of the library is Messenger. So are we Solemnity or Messenger? Yeah, 
Yeah, Solemnity's probably just harder to get down here. If I play this down, then I'm pretty pretty gassed to have whatever. And if I have Garrow's Messenger straight into, like you said, a feeder, we're pretty good. Okay. Third land here. We're doing the Teleria West things. Goes and gets a Valakut. Okay. Ren and Six goes up. Feeder, justice, right here. Feeder. Oh, it's Inquisition. It was clo so close. Okay. Oh, we can we can Inquisition them. Nothing wrong with doing that. We have a Ren and Six, and we have a Euro. Okay. Uh, just just take the Euro. Seems seems okay. I'm gonna jam out the Geralt's Messenger, and then pass the turn. Okay, we're not in a bad spot here. And if they, for whatever reason, decide to go down with Ren and Six and down again, then Solemni gets them, so, you know. Okay, it's probably time to cantrip our Silent Clearing. See if we can hit a win condition here, which the answer is absolutely not. Why would you think you could do that, Fluffy? I'm wondering if I'm supposed to attack Red and Six here, but I think I attack their face. There's n there's no spells. It's not going to do anything here. So Putrid Goblin here got the Garrow's Messenger. We got five a turn coming through. This is not a not a friendly set of cards for my opponents. Although keep in mind, just as I flooded out, my opponent is now flooding out. This game is absolutely brutal to people. Geralt's Messenger in here. Black, black, black. New one. Pass turn. Going to hold the land here so it looks like I've got some sort of interaction. And we get there. <laughs> All right. I flood out. Opponent wins. Opponent floods out. I win. So now we will play magic together. What do we think? Leyline did a decent amount of jobs there. Is it worth bringing in the other one? We could also swap one Broodmoth out for the Leyline. Do we think that's that important, though? You like it over an altar? We could do over one altar. I think it's between Broodmoth and Altar. I like having the actual threat versus the altar. Could be just a little bit dead. You like the feeder better potential? Just because it can become huge or... Oh, here's the one lander. Ah. <laughs> My opponent... Insta snapped off a mulligan. I probably have to do the same here. I know I'm on the draw, but I have to flood out, and we know. We know what happens. Let's be an adult. Mulligan. <laughs> Alright, so the question is what do we get rid of? You like getting rid of a canyon? That makes sense. It doesn't really help us cast Geralt's. That makes sense. We can Inquisition them. We can set up the altar. We can have a good old time with our friend over there. Nice four drop. Nice four drop. All right, here we go. Inquisition, we got the ley line in play. We see an Aether Gust here and a Dryad. We also have a Factor Fiction. So, Dryad kind of kills me. Aether Gust tempos me here a little bit. It's red or green. Like, what's in our list that's red? Croxa and Season Pyromancer? So it's just like, take take Dryad. Yeah, it hits Spyro in, in Croxa. So, there. Go ahead, opponent. I was going to say, I was like, 
I'm not playing Ponza. What's this hit? <laughs> All right, what if Foothills for our opponent? They've got the Gust. Would like some lands, not necessarily this land. I'm gonna go ahead and slam down an altar because they didn't have a counter spell. They top decked one, cool, but it's the highest chance to get it into play here. What did Foothills do and what did Foothole things? Snow Covered Island was not one of the cards. Three mana Dryad's been found. Misty, we know it's Factor Fiction and Aether. All right, well, we'll play a new altar down and just pass the turn. Nothing else to play there. Do need another black here. We could be playing Broodmoth first, though. Could be playing the Broodmoth. Main deck, Factor Fiction. Okay. Hmm. I give them charm versus other stuff. You like lands versus spells? I almost like like Archmage charm down here and that's it. Like if you want to counter something, fine. They're gonna take like a random draw. I don't particularly want to give them a random draw and like draws with Archmage charm. To me, it's like, this is your best card, go ahead and take it, or you can have lots of lands and a Thought Scour, and I don't care. This card does nothing, you know. Okay, they take it. They take all the lands, that's, that's fine. You can make an argument because they have a Dryad here, they're gonna be able to play all of this stuff out. But I think that Archmage Charm just draws them into something that's gonna kill us. I think Thought Scour is a bit of a, a weaker draw card. And especially with the Ley Line here. I do need a land. That's a good land, except it comes into play tapped. We're working, we're working our way up. <laughs> Thought Scours. They lose Scour or Lightning Bolt, Scour. Snow-covered island, snow-covered forest. Plays an island here, which was not one of the cards that were given. Aether Ghost, Ghost Quarter? Oh, they played the Ghost Quarter here. All right. So Moth here. And after the Moth is played, we can kind of hope to head another thing for Carrion. So we get Moth here, and then we're gonna get a Garrow's Messenger probably down. If there was something that gets countered, I guess it's the Moth. That's not F6, because I do have the ability to do some milling here. Stomping Ground, just tapped in. Land, we have Aether Gust and an unknown card here. Again, the, just drawing more cards probably was would be bad for us. Okay, okay. All right, so we have a Godless Shrine here. We have a Carrion Feeder, Garrow's Messenger, and a Brood Moth in play. So I play... Uh, I play Garrow's Messenger here. First, and then Carrion Feeder. If Messenger resolves, we win. How do we win? Wait, Last God, how... Wait, I'm missing something. How do we win? Man, I'm just not equipped to play this. Moth and Undying... Alternate. What? He still gets the Undying trigger, right? 
Okay, so it resolves, so now what? Sack infinitely now? So I sack here. Target them. Geralt's messenger. Now what do I click? <laughs> so I put... It doesn't matter. So this re returns. And because it doesn't have flying, or it doesn't have the undying, I sack again. And moth or undying will bring it back now. Okay, I see. I see. I see the alternation back and forth feels good. I can light the stack clear. No, 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 no. We start doing this like crazy amounts. We fill the stack. They'll eventually figure out we've killed them. I'll spill the stack for five minutes. It feels really good, last god. I was like, wait, no, we get the flying and it doesn't repeat. But no, you're right, the undying, if it doesn't have the undying counter, it has the flying counter and vice versa. Ooh, okay, I see the interaction. Oh, yeah. Oh. Look at that. Two two. Let's see if we can get a hot three two here. <laughs> that was cool. Undying the flip flop back and forth looks good. So sack outlet, Gareth's messenger, and brood moth versus solemnity, brood moth, and some other things. Is that for Twitter? I can put it on Twitter. Let me put it on Discord before I lose it. I don't know. It might be. It might be a Twitter thing. What do you think? If I put it on Twitter, I probably need to put the deck list with it. I like this hand now. I know this isn't the extra black I'm gonna need. I have permission to disseminate. I'm gonna keep this. <clears throat> like your votes, good luck, have fun. You too, get ready to get in a video. <laughs> Proliferate, my friend. No, don't play the temple. Don't be control. We are 2-2, two -two, which I'm, I'm I'm pretty pleased with. And we we have the combo kill on turn four here if everything resolves. So let's uh let's line it up. Temple ad nauseum? Oh, we're gonna win then. Make sure I fetch correctly. There is some like check and fetch and just don't screw it up. All right, we have the turn four kill here. My opponent likes our videos. Let's see if we can get them on a video. Up the curve we go. Up the curve we go. Don't have counters, don't have counters. Who needs fatal push? Up we go, up we go. Lotus Bloom. Do do do. Do 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 do. Pentab. Uh oh. Uh oh. Don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. I need one more turn, opponent. One more, one more, one more, one more, one more. <laughs> Give me one more. Give me one more. <sighs> Let it resolve. Breathe it in. Back to back. And we are comboing out, comboing out. We are running a combo. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. C-c-combo. Ah, yes. 
<laughs> Combo. And save target. Bam. And what's cool here is that my uh, lovely opponent here, although they can stop the life loss, I think, they can't stop the mill. That's fine. Here, let's clear. Always yield. Always yield. And keep going. Wait, what happened? I think I missed oh I needed this trigger to resolve, then it would bring it back. I'm like, what 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 froze? It's all it's all frozen. It's all frozen. Okay, uh, are we just racing the combo and maybe like just bringing Fulminators to maybe slow them in K Command if, if I miss my combo here? You can get rid of just fatal pushes and bolts. Like this is just a an oops button maybe. Push and bolt out and just, just like some Fulminator K Commands in just as something to do. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. How do you beat Leyline? How do I beat Leyline? We start bashing them in, or, or, um, yeah, we just bash them in, honestly. Mmm, I don't think I can keep this hand. It's a one lander. It's got some cool things going on, but a one lander is, uh, it's too much. Mulligan. This is better. This is better. I can probably get rid of this unearth. I could also probably just get rid of the brood moth here. Brood moth is a little ways away here. Unearth could be cycled. White ley line's good too. Against them, it's a dead card. All right, we have a sleight of hand here. We're hoping this Inquisition can kind of knock a card out of their hand that's important. They just go for their other win condition. There's an altar. We're getting there. We're getting there. Blood Crypt. Start with an Inquisition. Kind of dismantle a piece in their hand here. We got two Spoils and a Serum Visions. All right. Good luck. You can name those beautiful cards that you need and die. And die. A land goblin, please. Please. You got a Serum Visions there. But they put two cards on the bottom. There's a land. We need to grab, what am I doing here? Am I putting altar in first or carrying feeder to start beating down? Hmm. hmm probably just beat down. Altar, altar's like another win condition here and we just don't need that just yet. We'll get a, yeah, Godless Shrine. So if I draw a Moth here, we'll be fine. And go ahead, prone it. We know it's two spoils. They bottom both cards with the Serum Visions. City of Brass here. Making white mana. Okay. This is the one you wanted. 
So I put Solemnity down, right? And then next turn, if I get a land, I win. I have to think about all this every time. My brain's in imploding. Solemnity first. We'll, we'll, we'll attack for one. Need to not make, make a big deal about this. Two spoils to win. My opponent did the City of Brass thing last time. I don't know why they're doing that, but they did that. Now they're laughing at us. Spoils. Uh-oh, here we go. Naming. This could kill them. This could be the end of the road. Oh. They went for an Angel's Grace here. Okay. That's that's a cool card. <laughs> that's a cool card. Oh, this poor Ad Nauseam player. They like our videos too. Oh, land. Oh no, opponent, I'm so sorry. Alter. Got one. <laughs> oh my gosh, the fifth match is just the one to die for here. The combo here, the mill. We've gotten opponents through damage. We've gotten them. Oh. We'll get them next turn. We'll get them next turn. That was rude. Rude. Angel's Grace spoils unknown card. They'll have to cast the Angel's Grace to not die. They win if they have Oracle. It's true. They need an Oracle and a land. So they have spoils, Oracle. We'll need an untapped land here. Spoils. I guess they can name a land, right? If they have the Oracle in hand. Or they can name Oracle right now if they have that land, or I don't know. I don't know what they go get here. They got the Oracle. They got the Oracle. No. Oh, white mana. <gasps> You're a turn off opponent. Oh, it was so close. It was so close. We got there though. We'll go ahead and show it to them. We ha we had it. We had the the unearth and the ful oh, apparently a fulminator. We got there. Three two, playing the brood moth combo proliferate. If you do see this later, thank you for the game and thank you for the thumbs up on our videos. Here's the list. Three two. First takeout. We understand it. We we understand it now. You understand it. Last God understands it. I think at this point, playing this probably for another 20 matches, I would make exponential amounts of punts until I finally start to go, this hand makes sense. This one doesn't. This is how much of the combo I take out. This is how much interaction I need. Once I get to that point, I could see some very nice, like, Oh, mind game where I'm going to use my graveyard. No, I'm not going to use my graveyard. And just approaching games very, very differently and, and in different fashions. You could, you could, I agree, Last God. You could change the sideboard to your liking. Phyrexian Life, cool. You have a burn meta, cool. Leyline Phyrexian Life, done. Dredge, Euros, all kinds of graveyard interactions and other things you need to interact with your opponent in terms of maybe dismantling their hand, Leyline of the Void, maybe Thoughtseize, maybe Inquisitions, who knows? Lots of artifacts, little creatures, or need a little bit of discard and utility, maybe a lot of removal, you wanna grab your creatures back. K-Command could be good, who knows? Tron, Tron, Fulminator, Brood Moth, go. Who knows, who knows? Tailor to your liking, list is sweet. Thank you, Last God. That one was fun.